In this quick tutorial, we'll look at removing material from an STL file. So perhaps you've been provided with an STL file from an external source and you need to manufacture it, but let's say you want to cut down on the metal weight. So in order to do that, you need to remove some material or volume from the STL file itself. Now, since STLs are mesh surfaces and Jurica Dream is a nervous modeler, we're very limited in what we can do in Jurica Dream itself with an STL file. Okay, we're limited to basic translations like move and scale. That's why we need to use a file fixing software or STL fixing software like Limit State Fix that I have here. It's what our Bulletproof Booleans add-on is based upon. And within here we can fix our STL files for printing. You may have seen it already. But we can also add or subtract STL files from one another. Okay, and the principle is very simple. We're going to create a cutter in Jurica Dream, export it as an STL file, and remove that from our original STL file. In this case, this simple line here is quite low resolution, but that will be fine. So we could do a very simple kind of thing. Maybe we come in with a an ellipsoid. We could create it to the general size of the line head and move it into position. And then we would export that as an STL and we can see that we'd be removing this volume from the line head. It's a simple method, but you can see we're not going to get the optimal amount of removed metal from our line head there. So there are some other strategies. Another method that in this case I can see it won't work, but is usually a good one to use, is to just scale down our original STL file. And we'll keep the original entities, we'll scale it down by 20%. And we can use this to remove from our original STL and it's going to keep the general, it's going to conform to the, the line head a lot better since it is the line head itself. But since we have these overhanging areas, it's going to cause some failed areas or areas that where there's going to be open cavities and we don't want that. If we had a more simple model, this line head would really be fine if it wasn't for this overhanging ring here then then it will be good a good method to use but we can't use it here so what we can do is build up a surface using a series of curves cross sections and we can do this very simply with just three sketches placed on each of our global datums here and we're just taking a cross section of our line head through each datum there are tools, if you come into the point cloud, point cloud is the tab that deals with mesh files and if you can't see it in your, in your ribbon, right click in the ribbon, go to ribbon tabs and you'll be able to toggle it on and off. There are some nice tools in here for getting cross sections of STL files, mesh files. Um, it would be cross section, pick the STL model and the datum. Okay, and it will create this curve along the intersection. You could use this to maybe offset it and simplify it somewhat to create a nice curve there. But to me that looks like it might get a bit hairy and I'm just going to use a simpler method and that will be inserting a few sketches on our global datums. So I'll insert one on the YZ first and I'm just going to do a very simple trace of the line head something very simple like that exit insert a sketch on the next datum the xy same again but before i do this i want to reference my previous sketch and i'm going to reference it using this fourth method the curve intersection so it's going to place a point where this sketch, our first sketch, intersects this plane, the plane that this sketch is on. And I want to make sure that this subsequent curve is 
passing through that point, and it will snap to it. Okay, very simple. Okay, I'll be trimming out these curves to the um, datums once I have finished up. Okay, so final sketch, insert sketch on our XZ, and this is just going to be connecting our previous sketches together. So I'm going to come in with my reference again and reference both of the sketches, and then I can just place a point curve between all of these. I'll middle click and create it closed. Okay, we could add additional points if you want to bring it out a bit further, but I am happy with that. And we exit back into our part level. Okay, so now I'm going to blank out this line head. And we'll be using the Curve Mesh tool in the Freeform tab to build up our surface here. First of all, I want to split these two sketches at the point of intersection so that this can then become, for the Curve Mesh tool, a, a new point of intersection. So to do this, I need to project them, first of all, to their respective datums in order to turn them into curves. Okay, so I'm turning these sketches into curves by projecting them to their, pick the wrong one there, to their own datums. Okay, so we have our curves, now I need to split them. I'm using the trim split at point, pick the curve, the point is going to be at the intersection, so I'm right clicking, using the intersection input, and there we have split that curve, so we'll do the same for the next one, middle click, pick the curve, right click, intersection, Okay, so now we have four curves. Uh, we may want to just trim these to the um, X, Z datum just to tidy it up. So I'm going to trim two faces, window pick the curves, pick the datum, and trim them. Now we can come into the free form, use the curve mesh. We're picking these as the U segments, so left click, middle click. Okay, if the arrow is uh, in the wrong, on the wrong side, we can just flip it. Okay, so it's picking it from the same direction, and that will be important. Okay, so there are our U curves, and then we pick our V, it's just this one. And that is it, we don't need to keep the curves. Okay, we can come into the Heel tab, Fill Gap, pick the edge, and it's going to fill that up. Let's unblank our line head, and we can see that this is now our remove shape that is following the contours of the line a bit better than our previous shapes, albeit simplified still. Okay, so now we can export this shape as an STL file. First, I need to blank out my original block, otherwise that can um, sometimes create issues when exporting the this shape as an STL, so I'm just blanking it out to get rid of that from our window. File, export, Let's call it line head cutter. And we're making sure it's saved as a file type STL. Save. Okay, since this is the only object in our window, we can just hit OK. Or if there's other objects, as long as they're not STLs, we can select the shapes from our window like this. Press OK. So now I'll open up Limit State, and let's just open up the cutter to see what we have here. Okay, this is exactly what we created, it's the cutter, so I'm happy with that. Let's load up our line head, subtract, pick the cutter, and that's it.